This is Carl at National RV Detroit. I'm going to walk you through this uh, 2022 Mesa Ridge model number 330BHS. Okay, this is not a, a, a floor plan video or sales, it's, it's just a how to video. So I just go over and show you how uh, some of the stuff works here. So, first of all, you have power stabilizers on this one so one thing to remember about the power stabilizers which is right here this nut should be or bolt I'm sorry this bolt should be loosened when you raise and lower them so this inner tube can slide freely through the outer tube this is a strong arm type uh, um, uh, apparatus that basically when it's when you get it in the down position or you've got it stabilized then you'll tighten that up, and when you tighten it up, it'll take the, the forward and rearward movement out of the trailer. So it just makes it more stable. Another thing to know, if, you're, if your uh, jacks fail uh, for some reason, your stabilizers, you can, you see this shaft with a pin through it here, you actually can put a crank on there and crank them manually if you have to get yourself out of trouble. I'll show you the switches when we get to them to operate it, that sort of thing. But keep in mind what I said about the inner and the outer tube there. Okay. <clears throat> so, we have a uh, outside kitchen here. Okay. Um, let me look under here again. I, I think I must have missed what I was looking for. Uh, maybe not. Wait a minute. All right, let me look here. Maybe this is already plugged in. I hope to find out. No, it's not. Or yes, it is. So this this is already already plugged in. Sometimes you have to plug in the appliance. Let me yank on it here. Excuse me. Sometimes you have to plug the you plug in the appliance. Good using a quick connect fitty, that sort of thing. But this one it comes plugged in already. So oh, there it is right there. So there's the valve. So you don't have to plug this uh, griddle in before you uh, use it, so that's a good thing. Um, you have a dorm refrigerator, it works on AC power. As soon as you plug in your trailer, it turns on. Running water here, which is a great thing. Okay. Power awning with LED strip. Um, this vent up here is the range hood vent. So the thing to remember is that there's a baffle inside there. You can sort of see it from, if, I know it's black, black and black, but you, you can still see it. It's a baffle, so when you're venting to the outside, you have to get up there on a ladder or get a really tall person and, uh, and sort of snap it loose. There's a, a latch on each side. If you don't do that, it won't vent all the way to the outside correctly. So you always want to free up that baffle when you're running the fan. When you're traveling or uh, storage, you can just shut it. Okay, now this uh, this is where the quick connect is that I was looking for over there. So this has a quick connect fitting for the LP system right here. Okay, so if you were to hang a grill out here, for example, you plug it in right there to get into the LP system. This is your uh, water heater, of course. It has, it's both AC or excuse me, it's both. AC electricity and uh, LP gas, so you can run it on either or. Uh, the switches are inside the trailer. Keep in mind, this is the drain plug right here with an anode rod attached to it. That's an inch and a sixteenth six point socket, um, and that's where it screws into. So, right now, obviously, the water heater is empty uh, and it's in bypass mode because it's winter time. Uh, you, uh, when you run this, you know the switches are inside so when you turn on the electric heated element or the gas make sure you have water in this in the water heater before you turn it on it's very important otherwise you can damage it very quickly these are just signal out and power to put a TV those are your forward stabilizers so you have um, a lipper power tongue jack now you can pull it's hard to see because it's frosted over but you can pull this plug this rubber plug right off if this thing happens to fail, you can use a three-quarter inch socket or crank, uh, whichever you want to use, and you can actually operate it manually if you need to get yourself out of trouble. OK, 
okay uh, deep cycle marine battery okay these are uh, the front switches here for the front stabilizers one switch operates both front stabilizers and the, in the rear one will operate another one will oper operate both rear okay now this is uh, your kill switch for your battery so if you want to disconnect the battery you can turn that off and this device here is an inverter um, it's this one uh, I didn't look at it till I'll know when I get in there but this is probably inverts your refrigerator so what an inverter does it starts with uh, 12 volt DC from the batteries or battery and then it uh, inverts it to 110 AC so AC appliance can run off of it um, it's not an even an even trade I mean you, you don't you, you it's not how can I say it? it's not equal amounts so to speak you're gonna lose huh? this is kind of a lossy system so uh, uh, you only have limited time to uh, to invert when you're running off your battery okay I guess that came out right so um, keep that in mind that's the inverter there's also a converter in the trailer which does just the opposite I'll tell you about that when we get there your valves of course these uh, slide outs just so you know are with the cables on them are called uh, um, accu slides in case you need to know that there's another gray and another black okay you got a 50 amp cord uh, which is 30 feet long so this is a 50 amp system you also get the reducers to reduce it down okay. while we're looking at the up here the, the ladder you have a ladder on the back which is an excellent thing because the manufacturer states that you should inspect the roof every 90 days so you want to do that or have it done uh, keep ahead of any issues so you're gonna look for crack or separation any way water could get in through the sealant you also look at the attachments to make sure they're not damaged by low branches or road debris flying up there something like that okay we're pre-wired for a backup camera there and this is your water dock here okay so stable cable satellite through um, you have a, a, a spray that that screws on there so you can hose things down uh, you have your city water connection which is the most common way to get water to the trailer of course um, if you're going camping somewhere where there's not plumbing on the campsite, you can pre-fill your fresh water tank by using this one right here. And then you can just use the water pump to pump water out. Um, and this is a black tank flush. So after you dump your black tank, you uh, uh, leave the valve open, the dump valve open, and then you put a hose on here, turn it on, and it'll, it'll spray out the inside of the tank, clean off the sensors really well, that sort of thing. Okay? All right. Back around. I got the furnace running, so it should be nice and warm inside by now, considering it's freezing out here. Okay. Now we're still cleaning here, so it's not exactly spotless, but it will be by the time you pick it up. Okay. So we got some light on here. Let me get some more. There we go. Okay, so this is your control panel right here. You have lights here. You can turn your water pump on right there, for example. But if you touch it, you can light it up. Um, right now, the heat is running, as you can see. Um, you can check the amount of electricity you're using, get the details. Uh, you can do your uh, tank levels, water pump on and off, electric water heater on, gas water heater on and off. Remember I said always make sure there's water in the tank before you do that. Um, let me see here. Let's see what else we have here. Okay. Let's see what this. Tire pressure monitors. Slide rooms and awning. Okay, so you can operate those from here. Remember with the awning the power awning never leave it out unattended if you're not going to be at the campsite roll it in you don't want it to get damaged by the wind or weather okay so you have a a uh, 
fireplace that's also a, a space heater. You should have all your remotes here. So this is a this is the remote for the um, fireplace. This is the remote for your sound, and this is your TV remote here. Okay. I'll just talk you through this. You can basically you can change the the uh, look of the fire like so. Make it more orange. Change the color of the of the crystals. Um, this is off. You see the double zeros. Uh, the fan is off. That's low. That's high. So that's up all the way. And the last one's a timer. So you can set the timer to. You know, if you if you get up at the same time every morning, let's say you uh, and it's getting cool outside, you can um, instead of running your furnace, you can conserve energy by because this runs on gas or on electricity. I'm sorry, and. Um, uh, you could set it to, to turn on, you know, 15, 20 minutes before you get up in the morning and it'll it'll do that and warm this place up before you get out of bed. For example, this is your sound bar. It has FM radio, USB, you can stream that way. It has Bluetooth so you can stream wirelessly from your phone or your tablet. The HDMI here is an in. Let's say you wanted to, uh, uh, you had a portable Blu-ray player for some, for example. You could you could go straight into it, the system through here. Okay, now uh, it has two speaker zones, one and two. One is inside, two is outside. Um, so it pretty much does everything you need to do. It has also has the normal normal controls you'd see on any, any radio or sound bar, okay? Um, your TV works as a bit self evident, obviously, but uh, you want to strap it when you're traveling so it doesn't, doesn't get loose and get damaged. Okay, so still on this wall, I showed you outside you have the inverter. Let me look and see what's happening here. Yes, so the inverter, which I told you inverts power from 12 volt DC to 110 AC, that is that powers your refrigerator. Okay, so uh, basically what it's doing is taking it's taking 12 volts from the battery. It's uh, converted it to 110 AC and then sending it to your refrigerator. Right, so when you're going down the road, your your um, tow vehicle's alternator will be charging the battery. The battery will be sending power to the inverter. The inverter can, inverts to 110 AC from 12 volt DC, and then to the refrigerator. Okay. Now this device here is the converter. It does just the opposite. It converts AC to DC power. Okay. So let's open it up here if I can get it to open. Okay. So on this side, you see you got regular. Uh, 110 AC circuit breakers like you'd see at home and they're all labeled then the power is converted to 12 volt DC on this side so um, you see you have the fuses and breakers here 12 volt and they're labeled okay now so that's where the 12 volt power comes from when you're plugged in this also is a battery tender so when you're plugged in to, to you know your shore power is plugged in you can uh, this will this will convert the, the AC power to 12 volt DC and send it to your battery. So it's it'll actually send how much energy your battery needs and send the appropriate amount. So it'll always keep your battery charged up when you're plugged in. Okay. That's the power converter. Okay. Let's go to these obviously can be configured to, to sleep. Also there's probably I didn't prep this trailer but there should be tables in here. Yep, so you have tables that fit into these mounts here. Okay. The, the microwave works like any other microwave, right? Remember I told you the vent here, where is it at? The vent here vents to the outside. You have to open that baffle to it, to get, or else it'll just bounce off the valve. The, 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 the venting will just bounce off the baffle and back into the trailer if you don't open it. So you always want to have it open. Okay. Um, it's got a, it's got two speed fan, light, that sort of thing. Now this is your, obviously your range. You always want to keep the glass tops down when you're traveling so it doesn't get broke. I don't know if it's, let's see what we got here. So this is the sparker. You turn it clockwise to spark. You got three burners, three knobs of course, and this the one all over the right is for the oven. So we're just going to go like this. Now we've had it disconnected so it might take a few sparks to get it going here. There we go. But once you've been using it, it's lights the first time. Okay. So with the oven, 
you've got down all the way to the bottom there in the back you've got a a um, pilot light okay so this one you're gonna have to light so you, you go to the oven knob you go to pilot you depress the uh, the knob and keep it depressed then you light the pilot light after it lights you still hold this for another 10 seconds or so then you go to operating temperature and um, it'll cycle like an oven does but when you shut it off the uh, flame goes off, but so does the pilot light. So you have to relight the pilot light each time you use this. Okay. Um, this device here is your carbon monoxide LP gas detector. Obviously, if it goes off, you take everybody outside, leave the door open, shut off the gas, figure out what's going on. Also, if it beeps very slowly, it's telling you your battery's low. So let me just run through the test here. That was LP is good, carbon dioxide coming up, and then low battery alert. Same tone, just slower. Okay. Refrigerator works like any other refrigerator. It's an AC refrigerator, like you use in your kitchen. As I explained, that's when you can convert or invert power from the battery. Uh, this is just a, a switches for your power vents. Uh, so we can operate that re remotely. This one right here. Anyway, okay. Your bunk room. Let me get the lights here. So you, this one sleeps four. Um, this will this can turn into a bed, obviously. Uh, this table can drop down onto the cleats and turn it into a bed, and then of course this bunk folds down. So. Got floor place, four places to sleep. Your TV hookups are here, backer plate, and then signal out and uh, power. Okay. Let's go up front here. The bathroom is typical of RVs. It it has a this 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 has to be clean stuff. I got to keep telling you that, but it's, it's dirty. I know, but. Um, your shower works like any other shower. The sink works like any other sink. You do have another switch remote for your your um, your uh, vent there. Always run the vent when you're on. Uh, you can just run it on low actually, but when you use the shower, run the vent to pull the humidity out because these things trailers are built really tight these days. Also, if, you're, if it's a time of year and you've got a lot of people over and it's um, you're starting to get condensation from your breath because of the temperature, you can turn this fan on low. And it'll pull all that out. You'll never hear it running, and you'll never have an issue with condensation. Also, this is a GFCI switch. All, every plug in the trailer is wired through a GFCI. So if you're if you're outside, let's say, and it pops, you're gonna look look to reset it here. Right. And of course, the toilet works like any other RV toilet. Um, the the uh, black tank is directly below. That's antifreeze coming out right now, of course, because it's winterized. So the, the, the rule is you can't, you have to have chemical and water in the tank before you start using it. Otherwise the smell will be terrible and it can get clogged up. So after you hook up your trailer and your power and your water at the campsite, you come in, put one dose of chemical in the bowl, then you'll step on the pedal and let about a gallon or so of water swirl into the tank along with the chemical. Um, if you're going to stay at the campground for another week but you have to dump your tank, after you dump it, you repeat that again because you can't use it dry. So you put chemical and water in there. That's important. Okay, more TV hookups. Now this one, keep in mind, see the, see the uh, green light there, the green LED? There's a little button next to it that you can, it's hard to see, but it's there. You can turn that on and off, but you always want it on when you're using the antenna. Very important, otherwise you won't get a, a good signal at all. Uh, this is to stating that this is pre-wired for a, 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 a Wi-Fi signal booster. Um, plus you can get a 4G, I think, on this one, but that, if you get the, if you had cellular, for example, you, you'd have to pay a monthly fee. You, you go to your provider and you, you know, you'd work it out that way. But most people, if they add this, they just add the power or the signal booster for the, the, uh, um, for the, uh, Wi-Fi and, uh, you would get an antenna up on the roof and you would get a router in here too. So you can look into that if you're interested. Um, here's your stuff. This, um, he didn't put this together, but he will. I'll tell him about it. We got a new guy. Um, 
This is the hose to hook it up. Remember I told you you had to plug it into the LP system. This is the grill right here, by the way. I'm sorry. And then you have the two different cranks I told you about. That one will, will crank the stabilizer jacks in an emergency. This one here will operate the uh, power tongue jack in an emergency. And then you have your sprayer that I told you about. Okay. All right. This is obviously just uh, just closet space, and you have a you can put a hamper below that if you want to. Okay. All right, I think we've got it. I'm looking around as I go here to make sure I didn't forget anything, but I think I got it all covered. Um, let's see. Yes, so we're all set. Okay, so I want to thank you for purchasing your trailer here at Nashville RV Detroit, and please remember what I said about inspecting your roof every 90 days. That's important. People generally don't do that enough, generally. And um, we, the, like I stated, this is the water heater is empty and uh, it's bypassed, and there's antifreeze in the system, so we're fully winterized. Okay? Thank you.